Welcome to Draft Day Academy, a new video series where we'll be walking you through everything from basic tips and strategies to new features for the latest Wolverine Studios releases. I'm Steve Jackson Cowart, the Community Manager here at Wolverine Studios, and in this video, we'll be learning how to start a new association, including how to create your coach, in Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022, the newest release by Wolverine Studios. For veterans of the game, this is a familiar process that can chart the course for your latest challenge. And for newcomers, this is the best way to shape your first coaching experience to suit your desired play style and difficulty. Let's jump right into it. Once you've launched the game, you'll land on the main menu, where you can create a new association, load a previous association, or import an association from College Basketball 2021, among other options. If this is your first playthrough, don't worry about any of these other options, as all of the settings for your new association will come on the next screen. From here, click New Association. That'll take you to this screen, where you can decide what type of coaching career best suits your desired playthrough. The most common option here is Challenge Mode, and that's the one we'll be walking through today. But I want to briefly go over some of the other options for starting your coaching career. Quick Start is a great option for those of you who are newer to the game or those who prefer to play on the default settings, which is a large portion of the CB22 community. Sandbox mode is a great option for those of you who don't want to worry about wins and losses, or those of you who want your choice of school without regard for your coach's skill level. Multiplayer mode allows you to play with your friends via hot seat, which means taking turns on the same device, or online, which allows you to play with potentially hundreds of other gamers in the same universe. Speaking of universe, you can also play in universe mode, which is a great option if you like to control every aspect of your association. Perhaps you're running a simulation for stat purposes, or you just like controlling multiple schools at once. If so, this is the option for you. For this video, we'll be starting in challenge mode, which sees you take over at one school and try to work your way up the coaching ladder. Or, if you prefer, you can see how long you can last at one school before the board gives you the pink slip. This is the most realistic mode in the game, and arguably the most realistic mode in any college basketball sim on the market, which makes it by far the most common option for most gamers. Let's go ahead and start our career in challenge mode. One of the best things about Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022 and all Wolverine Studios games is the level of customization available within each association. You'll see on this first screen that you can choose to play in standard mode or with promotion and relegation, which is a fun twist on conference realignment. You can also change the name of each postseason tournament as well as change the logo for the overall association. And you can change the starting year if you prefer to start an association in the past or in the future. And for the first time this year, you can also change the name of each round of the championship tournament. For now, we'll leave those as the default, but I'm sure many of you will enjoy changing those to more familiar terms like what we see in college basketball every spring. Let's go ahead and fill out some basic details for this save and then move on to the next screen. If you want your game to start with custom teams, conferences, coaches, or even players, you'll want to download a mod from the Wolverine Studios forums and upload that file onto this screen using the Use Custom File option. If you don't have a mod, you can go ahead and just stick with Use Defaults, but I highly recommend checking out the mods that are on the forums every year. Special shout out to NCAA Hoops, who produces an annual college mod that is always among the most popular mods on the forum each year. I personally use it, and I highly recommend it for any of you as well. You can also choose what scale to display each player's ratings, either using 1 to 10 scale, 1 to 100 adjusted scale, or 1 to 100 real scale. This is completely a personal preference, but I would recommend using the 1 to 100 adjusted scale, which provides the largest scale to allow for more nuance and detail for each player's ratings. Some prefer a smaller scale to build more uncertainty into scouting, which is another great way to play. Under recruiting options, you can choose whether to allow illegal recruiting, how soon players can declare for the draft, how frequently players will declare for the draft early, and your overall recruiting difficulty. I prefer to play with illegal recruiting turned off and recruiting difficulty on high, and the other settings left the same. But again, this is all personal preference. Under additional options, you'll see a new option this year to use the modern day transfer portal. 
This is easily the biggest change in the game this year, and it's a big adjustment from past releases. Now transfers will be eligible to play right away, and players are much more likely to transfer than in previous years. If this is your first playthrough, I highly recommend leaving this setting on, and for veterans, I recommend giving it a shot too. It adds a dynamic free agency feel to offseason recruiting that really mimics what you're seeing in college basketball today. But if you don't like the high level of transfers, you can always turn this setting off for your personal dynasty. You can also set the likelihood of injuries and your job pressure, which will make it harder to keep your job when things aren't going well. I personally like turning this up to hard, but again, that's entirely up to you. Now that we've chosen our initial settings, let's move on to creating our coach. This first screen lets you put a personal touch on your coach. I have a favorite picture and clothing style for all of my playthroughs, and I recommend spending some time figuring out which combination fits you as well. But ultimately, this won't affect anything in the game. For those of you who care, my personal combination is 33 for the picture and 54 for the clothing style. But again, this is entirely up to you. You can also set your first name and your last name, your age, and your dream job. Don't forget to set your dream job, which should make it easier to land it down the line if your coach is qualified for it. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and choose my favorite team and alma mater, the North Carolina Rams. You can also set your personality traits, which will impact your ability to progress up the coaching ladder as well as how your coach interacts with players, recruits, and officials. A coach with low academic importance, for example, will have a tough time getting a job at a school with a high emphasis on academics. A coach with a low discipline rating will have a tough time landing a recruit who values discipline. And a coach with a high temper may be susceptible for a technical foul if he tries to work the refs too much in a game. Don't get too caught up in these, as they have a much bigger effect for computer-generated coaches than they will for your coach, as you have the ability to dictate your path a bit more than the computer-generated coaches do. You can always set all these to high if you're worried about the way they might affect you, but I would recommend suiting them to your own personal style and even your own personality and going from there. I'm going to leave these all as average for this playthrough, but I would recommend setting them to suit your personal coach. On this next screen, you can set your coach's philosophies. These can all be changed at any point during your coaching career, and I'd actually recommend changing some of these during your career based on the personnel at your respective school. So don't feel like you need to get all these perfect before starting your coaching career. Each setting has a description below it, and many of them, like player rotation, crashing the boards, and zone defense rate, are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't spend too much time on each. But I do want to highlight a few key settings to consider for your coach. One is offensive pace, which dictates how quickly your team looks to get off a shot. This is essentially your team's tempo on offense, so changing this setting could result in an up-tempo attack if you have it all the way to the right, or a slow, methodical offense that drains the shot clock on every possession if you have it all the way to the left, or anything in between. One rule of thumb is that more possessions will favor the better team, which will have a higher chance to prove its superiority on the court, so keep that in mind when setting your offensive pace. Another key setting is defensive intensity. Setting this all the way to the right will result in more steals and fatigue your opponents, but it could also result in more fouls and tire out your own players too. That's especially true in CB22, which reworked the fatigue system from past releases. Of course, setting this all the way to the left means a low intensity defense, which could mean your opponent scoring a few more points than you'd like them to. I like to play with this setting at an 8 or a 9, but that requires a deep bench with aggressive defenders, so be sure to consider your own team's personnel when setting your defensive intensity. I'll leave all these as the default for now. This next screen is easily the most important when creating your new coach, as this determines your coach's starting ratings and their eventual ceiling. Many veterans like to set their initial ratings very low and their potential rating very high. That allows them to work their way up from a low job and progress all the way to their potential dream job with the skills to match. You may prefer to start with a highly rated coach and see how quickly you can win a championship. That's entirely up to you. Your initial coaching ratings will also determine what job offers you get when starting your career. A coach with average skills, for example, 
will likely only get head coaching offers from schools with a prestige below 40. A rookie coach will be stuck with schools of a prestige below 15. Your first job can have a major impact on the rest of your career, so think carefully about what type of playthrough you want before setting these ratings. So what exactly do all these ratings mean? Let's go through them one by one. Offensive concepts determines your coach's ability to understand and teach offense. This will impact how effective your offensive sets are learned and executed, as well as your coach's ability to scout and evaluate players in offensive categories. Defensive concepts determines your coach's ability to understand and teach defense. This will impact how effective your defensive and press sets are learned and executed, as well as your coach's ability to scout and evaluate players in defensive categories. Scouting ability determines your coach's ability to evaluate the skills and play styles of recruits, as well as those of players on both your team and opposing teams. Player development determines your coach's ability to help develop players to their full potential. And finally, recruiting ability determines your coach's ability to be successful in recruiting. A higher rating will lead to not only more recruits signing, but also a greater chance of getting opportunities to talk to recruits who initially are not interested in your school. While your assistants handle much of the recruiting process, this rating comes into play in a big way with in-home visits, which is the number one way to secure a commitment from a top recruit. It also makes it more likely that recruits will answer the phone in the first place, and then your assistant will have more of an opportunity to learn from them in the recruiting process. Assistant coaches also have ratings in all five categories, and they're largely influential in the success of the head coach at any given school, but the head coach has the biggest impact by far, so these ratings will help shape your success early on and across your entire playthrough. I always prefer to do custom ratings to start, usually with one point higher than average to open up more offers for my first job. But for this playthrough, let's just start with average with an elite ceiling, as that's the most common way to do a playthrough for most veteran players. Finally, we've reached the job selection screen, where you'll field offers for your coach's first ever job. You have the option to take over as a head coach or an assistant, and you can toggle head coach jobs only in the top right. Most veteran players in this game prefer to start as a head coach of a low prestige school as opposed to an assistant at a high prestige school as there's simply more to do as a head coach. But again, this is entirely a personal preference. I always prefer to play as a head coach, so I'm going to leave this toggle on. When deciding which job to take, there are a few key things to consider. One is prestige, which is often the most important rating for a recruit in deciding whether to come to your school. It also impacts which teams are willing to play against your school in non-conference, as well as your school's ability to move conferences after a successful season. Higher prestige schools usually have more money, which is another thing to consider. A higher budget means more money to spend on assistant coaches, as well as more money to spend in recruiting. If that sounds like a big deal, that's because it is. So don't be afraid to chase the money when choosing between job offers. You'll also want to consider a school's facilities, and academics, which are both factors that recruits consider when deciding whether to commit to your school. Facilities can be upgraded over time, and academics can impact whether a recruit has the grades to qualify for your school. Consider both when choosing your next job. Finally, just like with any job, you'll always want to consider location. The easiest way to recruit players at a small school is to pitch location, which will often be an important consideration for in-state recruits. That also helps your coach build a pipeline bonus which is awarded after recruiting enough players from one state across an entire coaching career. So if you have your sights set on your dream school in California, you might want to consider starting at a smaller school in California so that by the time you land your dream job, you'll be an in-state recruiting powerhouse. For our first job, let's go ahead and take over as the head coach at Charlotte, which is just a short drive from my dream school that we set earlier. At this point, you can go back and change any settings about your head coach. But once you feel good about those, you can click finalize in the top right and save and finish league creation. And just like that, you created your coach and are ready to start your road to the tournament. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our YouTube and Twitch channels to stay up to date on all things Wolverine Studios, including future episodes of Draft Day Academy and our other video series. You can also find us across our many social media channels, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Slack, Reddit, and the original Wolverine Studios forums, where you can interact with other community members, join online leagues, and potentially win free games and merchandise through our community giveaways. Also, be sure to tell us your thoughts on this video and anything else you want to see in the comments below. Thanks for watching.